What's up everyone? As always, hope you're all having a fantastic day. Today we are talking about my 10 favorite iPhone tips. Uh, so if you're looking at my phone, you might be thinking that your phone doesn't look exactly like it. And it's because uh, I'm running the beta software for iOS 16. However, all of these tips have to do with iOS 15. So uh, if you're up to date on your uh, software updates, you'll be perfectly fine. iOS 15 is the latest public uh, iOS version at the moment. So uh, don't worry about it. It'll work on your phone perfectly fine. So like I said, we're gonna be talking about my 10 favorite tips and they're gonna range from uh, the first one being the most simple one all the way up to number 10, which is my absolute favorite one. And I've actually never seen anyone talk about this one. Maybe I'm just overhyped about it or maybe it's just something that most people don't know. But regardless, let's get started with tip number one. Uh, so you might have been in a situation at some point where you had a lot of text and you just noticed that you made a spelling mistake somewhere uh, earlier. And so you tried to move the cursor back to that place by holding on your phone and it'll kind of pop up kind of a magnifier. And that's one way to do it. But another way is just to hold on the space bar and uh, it'll actually turn the whole keyboard into a trackpad which will make it a lot faster and a lot easier to uh, move around the cursor within your uh, text box. The second tip has to do with security. So uh, if you ever get your phone stolen, well, first of all, you'd be uh, extremely sad, but you'd also want to try to find it with the Find My app. However, if uh, the person that took your phone uh, decides to turn off your phone or put it into airplane mode, you sadly won't be able to find your phone. But thankfully, there is a setting for that. So what you wanna do is go to the settings app, tap on your face or the Apple ID uh, section. And then once you're in there, you'll see the find my uh, area. So you just click in there and then I click on find my phone and turn on everything in there. And then you can uh, double check if it worked by pressing the uh, turn off button for a while until you see the pop up to completely turn off your phone. And it'll say something around the lines of uh, find my will be uh, available even when the phone is turned off. So if you ever lose your phone or if it ever gets stolen, uh, you'll have the peace of mind of knowing that you can find it with the Find My app. Now, up next, we have a way to make your screenshots look a lot better and a lot more professional. So uh, let's say that tonight you wanna go see the sunset and you're wondering what time it is. Um, so you head to the weather app and you see it'll be at 801. You would take a screenshot. Now, let's say you wanted to share that screenshot with your friends. What you would usually do is take the screenshot, of course, and then make a little circle around it or something with the uh, pen tool. However, there is a much better way of doing this. If you just tap on the little plus icon, you'll see a pop-up with the magnifier option. So if you just tap on there, you'll see a little magnifier pop on to your screenshot. And using the uh, green circle, you can zoom in uh, more or less. And the blue circle will allow you to make the magnifier larger. So once you're satisfied with the way that looks, you can even take it a step uh, further by adding uh, the opacity layer. So what that will allow you to do is make the rest of the screen more opaque to put even more uh, focus on, in this case, the sunset. While we are on the subject of photos, you might know that you're able to uh, hold on to an application and then click on other apps to drag and drop them somewhere else. However, you might have not known that this actually works for a lot of other applications within your phone, including the photos app. So if you just hold on to a photo and then click on other photos, then you do a little yoga move to go back to, let's say the messages app, you can drag and drop them directly into a message and take a bit of time to import all these pictures, of course. Uh, it just adds them to your clipboard and then it pastes them wherever you drop them and it works super well. But that also works with uh, files. So uh, it's a huge time saver if you just wanna copy and paste a bunch of things at the same time. Up next, you might have been in a situation at some point where you thought the music was really good and you wanted to know exactly what song was playing. Uh, well, there's actually a way in your phone to see exactly what song is playing. And the way you would turn it on is uh, you go to the settings in the control center and then you just want to make sure that the music recognition uh, option is turned on. And then all you have to do is slide down the top right corner of your phone to see the control center appear. You just click on the uh, music recognition uh, icon and we'll see what music is playing but now what's really cool about this feature is that if you just hold on uh, the icon of the music recognition you'll be able to see the entire history of songs that you've uh, recognized so let's say you forgot to add it to your apple music or spotify or whatever service you're using you'll have the entire history there so you'll never forget the good songs that you've uh, heard 
You might have seen other videos where they talked about how you can scan documents directly into the notes app on uh, directly on your phone by pressing the little camera icon and then scanning a document. However, you can also do this within the files app, which I personally find to be a lot more useful uh, because there are actual files and they'll synchronize across all of your Apple devices. So if you ever need to send, let's say, tax documents to your accountant, it'll be super easy to do. You can scan them directly on your phone by pressing the three little dots and then uh, scanning a document and we'll save it all directly within the files app. And like I said, if you go on your computer, you'll be able to attach all of these into an email and just send them uh, all the documents. Or like we talked earlier, you could just drag and drop them directly into an email on your phone. But regardless, I think that having your important documents within the files app instead of the notes app is really, really useful. Another super cool feature that Apple introduced a while ago is called Live Text. Uh, and what that feature does is that you can use your camera to uh, scan any text that you see. Uh, but the cool thing about this is that you can actually copy and paste that text. So uh, let's say, I know you're at a restaurant or something and you see something that looks good. Uh, you could just grab your camera on your phone and copy all the text and then send it to, I know, your friend to tell him to come eat with you. But where that feature gets a lot cooler is that let's say you were to walk around in Japan and you happen to fall on an iPad with a text written on it. You have no idea what it says. Uh, I might be able to help you and let you know that this says uh, subscribe to my channel. Now you might be wondering, Nick, you can actually read Japanese and no, absolutely not. However, your phone can actually translate any text. So you just, uh, well, scan the text with your phone. It'll recognize that it is text. You click on the little uh, live text icon and you'll see an option to translate it all. And now you can see that it indeed says subscribe to my channel. You'll be able to hear exactly what it sounds like in Japanese as well. So it's definitely a super, super useful feature if you're going to a country where, well, you don't, you're not able to read uh, the text that they write. So let's say once again, you're at a restaurant and you don't really understand what's written. You can just scan the text, it'll help you out. Or if you're lost in the city and you need to read directions, well, once again, the live text uh, function will help you out. And your phone can actually recognize a lot more than other languages. If we just go to the Photos app, for example, uh, if I go to this picture of a plant, um, you can see that the little eye icon down, uh, on my phone has little stars around it. If we go to a picture, a regular picture, you'll see that it, these stars aren't there. And that's because when you have these stars, it means that your phone recognizes something in the picture. So if you just tap on it, it, it recognizes that this is a, actually a picture of a plant. And it'll even um, run searches on the internet to try to find exactly what plant it is. So in this case, it is indeed a watermelon plant. It doesn't produce watermelons. It's just the way it's called because of the leaves. And it even works uh, for dogs. So if we go to this picture of my uh, strange dog, you can see it sees it's a dog and it is indeed an Italian Greyhound. It is a bit of a hit or miss sometimes if the subject is not really clear, like in this picture, it'll still see that it is a dog. However, it might not get the uh, breed right. Like in this case, it's not right. Uh, I've even seen this work for locations. So uh, I think it was a picture of Montreal or something. And so uh, the uh, phone was able to tell that it was a picture of Montreal. So it's definitely a super impressive feature. And if you ever want to know uh, what plant or what dog you're looking at, you can just use this feature. The next feature is my second favorite feature of the iPhone. And it's a feature that saves you a ton of time and I use it every single day. I'll show you exactly why in a minute. So this feature is called text replacement. And so uh, the way you turn it on is if you go to the settings in the uh, general and then keyboard, you'll see text replacement. And what this basically does is that you can set up shortcuts to then replace them uh, with full phrases. So you could have uh, shortcuts that you write quite often, like uh, maybe OMW will turn to on my way, or you can have that set up for your phone. So you could write something like uh, hashtag hashtag and we'll turn it into your phone number maybe at, at uh, switches it for your email address, or there are phrases that you're typing quite often. Um, maybe you work at a job where you have to send the same kind of emails quite often. You could have that, uh, you could have the entire kind of phrase uh, set up as a shortcut. That's actually the reason why I use it the most. I run an Instagram page where I post uh, desk setups and I have a lot of hashtags to include all the time. So I've just kind of set up uh, a long list of hashtags associated with a smaller shortcut and it's been saving me a ton of time. Uh, you could have that as well if maybe there's a question that people ask all the time and you, you could save 
uh, a web page that explains the answer pretty well and just have a shortcut there. So like I said, it's definitely a feature that can save you a lot of time. I know it might not seem like it, but time adds up. So if you're saving a few seconds every single time you type something, well, at the end of the month, you'll be saving a lot of time. And now next, my most favorite feature. It's like I said, a feature that I've never heard anyone talk about. Um, but basically, your phone is also designed for people that have a hard time reading. So if you go to the settings app, there is a function that allows you to make your phone read your text uh, out loud. So uh, let's say you're a student and your teacher sends you a document and you don't really want to read it, you'd rather listen to it. There are software that you can pay for that will do that. However, there is one built directly in your phone. So I really wish I would have known about this when I was in school. It would have saved me a lot of time. Or now I use it mainly for uh, whenever I'm reading a blog post or even the news in the morning and also for uh, audiobooks. I do pay for audiobook services because I think it's nice to encourage uh, those services. However, for all the books that I've purchased digitally, I just use this function instead. And the way you would turn that on is by going once again to the settings app and then you want to go to accessibility and there'll be something called spoken content. You just want to turn everything on. So once you have all of that set up, you just want to head on to whatever you want to read. You just swipe down with two fingers and it'll read on its own. There are tons of voices to choose from. However, they won't sound like Morgan Freeman is reading you a bedtime story, but you can listen, definitely have a listen to all of them and see which one is your favorite. Um, I personally listen to audiobooks at a 1.5 speed or two times speed anyways. So the voice isn't that annoying to me. So that was it for today. Hope you guys enjoyed these. Let me know down in the comments which uh, tip was your favorite one. And if you guys want to see the tech that I recommend for students, or if you're just looking for great tech on your budget, check out this video that I made on the subject. I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a great day.